Here's the Dirichlet integral. Again, just kidding, the Dirichlet integral. And last time I evaluated it using Feynman's technique, but a much more efficient approach to actually destroy this integral is using the Laplace transform. So same drill as before, I'm gonna define an integral function i of some parameter t, but this time it's much easier to decide where exactly should I place the parameter. So going with the most easiest or most obvious choice, we're going to insert the parameter as part of the argument of the sine function. So this here is my integral function, but one more modification could be useful here. Since we're interested in the integral from negative to positive infinity of sine of x by x with respect to x, we notice that this function here is an even function because sine of x and x are both odd functions. So if you replace x by negative x in both cases, the negative sign just pops out, the case for sine of x and x. So they cancel out and you get positive sine x by x. So this function here is an even function. So instead of integrating from negative to positive infinity, you could just integrate from zero to positive infinity and double the result. So let's define our integral function i of t as the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x times t by x. Now to apply the Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform of i of t equals the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative s t times the integral function i of t. And we can expand this using our definition of the integral function i of t. And we have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative s t times the integral from zero to infinity of sine of t x by x integration with respect to x. And then outside we have this integration with respect to t. Now because this factor, this exponential function is independent of x, we can just slip it inside this integral and we now have a double integration problem. And it's in cases like these that the Laplace transform, when used to evaluate hard integrals, becomes sort of an becomes sort of a uh, integration under the integra integrating under the integration sign. Notice the order of integration: we're integrating first with respect to x, then with with respect to t. And can we? switch up this order of integration to make our lives easier. How will it make our life easier? That'll become clear in a few moments. But the question is, can we actually perform this switch up? Well, because we have a continuous function of x and t, by Fubini's theorem, we can in fact switch up the order of integration and we can integrate first with respect to t, then with respect to x. So we have the double integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times sine tx divided by x. And notice that first up we are integrating with respect to t now. And because we're integrating with respect to t, we can take this one by x term outside of the t integral. And what we have left is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times the sine of tx with respect to t. And outside we have this integration with respect to x. Now notice one thing that I've enclosed in curly braces. This here is in fact the Laplace transform of sine tx where the x here is a constant. So using our table of Laplace transforms, we can write this integral now as the Laplace transform of sine tx, which evaluates to x by s squared plus that constant x squared. And now you see we only have a single integral to worry about, and the x's cancel out quite nicely. So we're interested in the integral from zero to infinity of one by x squared plus s squared with respect to x. And we're integrating in the x world, so the s parameter is just a constant anyway. So 
This evaluates out obviously to the inverse tangent of x by s and you have to divide by s out here as well and the limits of integration are 0 to infinity. So using these limits as x approaches infinity the inverse tangent of, of x by s will approach pi by 2 and as x approaches 0 you get a 0. So this is the Laplace transform of our integral function i of t. And now to recover back our integral function we need the inverse Laplace transform. Now this pi by 2 is just a constant factor and we, we're left with the, uh, we need the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s and this will equal the integral function i of t. And the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s is just 1. So that means i of t equals pi by 2. So this is an interesting result that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine t x by x dx equals pi by 2 and it's independent of the value the parameter t actually assumes. So this implies that our integral i which was the integral from negative to positive infinity of sine of x by x taking t equal to 1 taking uh, t equal to 1 of course uh, this equals twice this result so this equals pi and that's quite a nice result and we see that the Laplace transform is quite an efficient way of evaluating integrals like these so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe thank you see you next time